What's up, everyone? Surprise, bet you thought you saw the last of me. It's been over two years since I stopped uploading to this channel. Initially, I just meant to take a bit of time to get settled into my new life after moving halfway across the country and getting a full-time job. I started this channel during my free time in college after the start of the pandemic, but I hadn't really realized how much I relied on the freedom in my schedule in order to make these videos. So, okay, my return is a little bit later than I anticipated. But I have not spent my time unproductively. And that's what this video is going to be about. Before I get back to my more research-focused work, this one is just going to be about my personal experiences with starting over in a new style. So, without further ado, let's get into it. When I decided to move, the first thing I did was look for good dojos in the area. Well, that's not exactly true. The first thing I really did was look for a job and an apartment. But during the breaks in my job and apartment search, I blew off steam by looking into local dojos. By this point, I hadn't been regularly training in an in-person dojo for quite some time, so I was really itching to get back into it. The problem was, I moved somewhere without a lot of gojiri around. So, I did what any reasonable person would do in this scenario. I signed up for a Kyokushin tournament without any experience in the rule set. I promise I didn't just do this on a whim. Naturally, I wanted to make sure that my karate practice wasn't disconnected from reality. I hadn't competed in full contact rules before, so I was pretty realistic about my chances. I knew that I wasn't entering to win the whole tournament, and honestly, I didn't expect to win a single fight. My goal, aside from getting the experience, was to make it through one round without getting knocked out, knocked down, or losing my will to fight. And despite taking a very solid liver shot, I managed that goal. From that point onward though, it became clear that I really needed more full contact experience. So I went and joined the dojo that hosted the tournament. The other reason I chose Kyokushin was because, despite my willingness to branch out into a new style, I didn't want to stray too far from my origins. As longtime viewers might already know, Kyokushin is half Shotokan, half Goju. Oyama Masutatsu, the founder of Kyokushin, studied Shotokan under Funakoshi Gichin and his son Gigo, but eventually defected to the Gojiru instruction of the well-muscled So Nechu and his long-haired associate, Yamaguchi Gogen. In fact, when Oyama first opened his own dojo, it was under the banner of Gojiru. I figured that if I was starting over, at least my prior Goju experience would carry me some of the way based on this similarity. By this point, I've been training there for two and a half years. In that time, a lot has happened. I went back to the same tournament the next year and ended up placing second, and then avenged my finals loss in another tournament's round one before soundly losing to my own dojo's best fighter, Ed. I've graded a few times, and even went to Santiago, Chile, where I served as the impromptu translator for Matsushima Yoshikazu Kancho during the international don grading. Throughout this whole process, everyone I have encountered has been incredibly kind. From the shihans, senseis, and senpais at the dojo, to everyone I've met at competitions and training camps, I've received lots of encouragement of my efforts, a fair amount of assistance in getting acclimated to the way that Kyokushin does things, and several thousand leg kicks. When I first started with Kyokushin, I broke out something that I hadn't worn in quite a while. My white belt. Technically my mom's white belt, because mine, my first one, is too small, doesn't fit me. I felt like this was a common courtesy when visiting a new dojo, but I also wanted to approach this training with an empty cup. And starting back up was hard work. I certainly wasn't out of shape, but training pushed me in ways that I hadn't been pushed in quite a while. My thighs, ribs, and upper arms were bruised for months. My motion had gotten awkward and clumsy during the pandemic. And I had new kata to learn for the first time in years. But my goju experience did serve me well. I had done body conditioning before, and with time my conditioning came back. I pretty quickly got used to the ashi sabaki, as well as how to brace myself against strikes that I hadn't encountered before. And the new kata turned out to be less daunting than I thought they would be, since I already know how to learn a kata a skill that a normal white belt would definitely not have. The kata that Kyokushin shares with Goju were honestly more challenging to adapt to, since the alterations I had to make went against years of instincts that I'd built up. I can't deny that my prior experience in Goju Ryu made it overall much easier to get started with Kyokushin. But while I can't quite call my Kyokushin experience starting over, I have had one other experience that definitely qualifies. About a year ago, I was in the process of changing jobs. My new job overlapped with my Kyokushin Dojo's hours, which meant that I would have to severely cut down on my training. Obviously, this wasn't ideal. Fortunately, in January of that year, I had attended an open house at a Muay Thai gym, and that gym offered 7am trainings. So, for the second time since my move, I started over. Only this time, I had a very different experience. While Kyokushin was certainly a new adventure for me, 
Like I said before, I wasn't really starting from scratch. The basic techniques and the terms were all the same, despite some slight tweaks to the mechanics, and once I got past the pinons, there were even many of the same kata. Even more importantly, the gi was the same, the structure of a class was the same, and despite the stylistic differences, the core of the art of karate felt very much the same. Muay Thai, on the other hand, was different. For the first time, punches to the face weren't a penalty and weren't just something that was shown in self-defense drills. They were a core part of the training that I had to get used to. Despite looking like a mawashigari, the mechanics of the Thai kick were unlike almost anything in karate, and the arm swing alone took me at least a month to understand, let alone get comfortable with. I had finally reached a point where I felt somewhat comfortable in Kyokushin sparring, but Muay Thai sparring threw a wrench in that. I was truly a beginner again. I only really hit my stride when my coach had us focus on clinching for a bit. I had been interested in clinching for a while, but the Kyokushin rule set doesn't allow for grabbing of any kind, and my goju training it never spent much time on it aside from self-defense yakusoku kumite. Once we began working on clinching, however, I started to notice that the movements and positions felt very familiar. My coach recognized this and told me that I would benefit from watching and imitating Muay Cow fighters, the term for fighters who specialize in clinching and kneeing. So I did. And the more I learned, the more I felt that I had seen a lot of this before. But we'll get to that. Over time, I've slowly but surely gotten more used to getting punched in the face. It's also been fun working sweeps into my sparring and getting a chance to use more elbows and knees, two of my favorite weapons. But it was definitely hard work getting there. Incidentally, the job that had kept me from training karate in the evenings eventually fell through, so I was able to return to training both Muay Thai and Kyokushin regularly. That's been my training regimen for the last year, and I intend to continue going forward. So, in the last two and a half years, I have left Goju Ryu behind and started over in new arts not once, but twice. Or have I? Even though it's been quite some time since I've had formal instruction in Goju Ryu, I've always maintained that my style is Goju Ryu. Whatever else may get added in, everything that I practice is Goju. Kyokushin is a separate style on paper, but much of its core was inherited from Goju. The focus on conditioning and building a strong body, not to mention much of the upper level kata curriculum, was taken directly from Goju. The full contact kumite that Kyokushin is most known for was not present in Oyama's Shotokan practice, but it did exist in Sonei Chu's Goju Ryu. In fact, the commonly told story behind Oyama's transition from Shotokan to Goju is that he was impressed by a Taryu Jiai, a competition between styles, where So Nechu and his students soundly defeated Funakoshi Gigo and his. So I think it's fair to say that, despite everything, my Kyokushin practice is still very Goju. But there isn't that sort of direct connection between Goju and Muay Thai. After all, these two arts were developed in entirely different locations, both from origins that were established well before either art was known by its current name. Nevertheless, even though Muay Thai is Muay Thai and Goju is Goju, when I personally approach Muay Thai, I do so through the lens of the theory of Goju. What I had recognized in clinching that drew me to it was its similarity to Sanchin Kata. Once I had made that connection, everything started to click into place. The isometric tension, the classic Sanchin Kamai, even the comparatively squared off stance all served me incredibly well as I worked on developing my clinch game. And I'm far from the only person to suggest a connection between Sanchin and the clinch. Giles Hopkins, whose writings on Bunkai have been very influential for me, interprets the double-armed kamai as a sign of clinching or grappling intent in all the goju kata where it appears, especially Sanchin. And while this may be unique to my gym's take on clinching specifically, the circularity of the arm motions involved in swimming between different positions is at least highly reminiscent of Sanchin's closing sequence. Now, I don't want to overstate my case here. Sanchin is missing three key elements from the Thai clinch, namely elbows, sweeps, and neck pulls. But what I do know is that my early improvements with clinching are largely due to me realizing this potential connection. I personally believe that what Goju Ryu really is, at its core, isn't just a set of kata or a specific curriculum of techniques. It is a theory of fighting, a specific approach to combat and to self-protection. This theory is the connective tissue that makes the different kata, learned from disparate sources or possibly synthesized from other techniques, coalesce into a system. Without that theory, a theory of building a strong body, of harmonizing one's motion with your breath, of circularity and redirecting rather than simply accepting attacks, of natural motion from a firmly rooted base, there would be no goju ryu to speak of. And to me, as long as I strive to understand that theory and approach these new styles from the perspective of how they can both reinforce and challenge that theory, making it more solid and thorough in the process, then whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm training, is goju. So I'm back. Probably. This September, I'll be starting grad school, and I'd like to get back to making videos for this channel again 
during whatever time I'm left with. I have a few ideas in the works, such as a project I've been plugging away at on and off for about a year about Hojo Undo, and I'd also like to expand the types of videos that I make. I've acquired quite a few interesting martial arts books by scouring secondhand bookstores. So maybe I'll review some of those. Or perhaps I'll even tackle a few topics related to Kyokushin or Muay Thai. I also want to say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone who was waiting for my return while I was gone, especially those of you who left comments. While I haven't been active on this channel, I have read every single comment that came through, and knowing that I've had an impact on so many of you has really meant the world to me. I also owe a lot of thanks to every single person who has encouraged me to return to this channel. My partner, my family, my good friends at the Martial Arts Alliance Discord server, a handful of people who recognized me in person at the Kyokushin Challenge, and so many more. And last but certainly not least, I wouldn't be where I am without the many wonderful instructors that I've trained with out here. So, an extra special thanks to Xian's Campbell and Hazard, Sensei Adam, Senpai's Rob, Jean, and Ed, Coach Andy, Coach Bobby, and all of my training partners in the dojo and at the gym. Until next time, I've been the Gojiru Philosopher, and please appreciate this video of me trying, but not successfully landing, a Domowashi Kaiten Gary.